squash bugs. The very name sends shivers up the spine of the gardener. As the name implies, these are uh, insects, true bugs, uh, that like to feed on squash. However, they will feed on a wide variety of, of cucurbit plants, uh, typically preferring squash, and then um, also feeding on pumpkins, watermelons, cantaloupe, and, and uh, cucumbers, uh, in that order. Uh, the squash bugs are um, generally uh, the most common and most prevalent pest of cucurbit crops in Oklahoma. Um, they do have piercing sucking mouth parts. They cause damage to the leaves um, and also can feed on fruits uh, once they're developed by inserting their piercing sucking mouth parts and feeding on the plant sap and, and plant juices. Uh, typically we will start to see infestations of squash bugs um, in our cucurbit crops uh, starting around April or May as the adults are emerging from their overwintering sites um, either in the garden or in the surrounding environment. Um, upon entering the crop uh, in April or May again, uh, they'll start to mate and they'll begin to lay eggs. And those, la those eggs are typically laid on the underside of the leaves of their house plants. Now crops can uh, tolerate a moderate amount of squash bugs, so it's usually when we get the heavy infestations that we notice uh, appreciable damage on the plants themselves. Again, they're feeding on those leaves and sometimes on those fruits. Um, the, uh, Plants, once they're heavily infested, are going to start to suffer and we're going to see a reduction in fruit quality and quantity. Uh, so something needs to be done at that point. Uh, so we can look at a few cultural management strategies for squash bugs. Uh, firstly, we can try to choose uh, varieties of squash that are less preferred. Um, typically we're talking about royal acorn um, and butternut squash. Um, these are more favorable, um, or sorry, these are less favorable for squash bugs than things like summer squash and pumpkin squash. Um, if it's too late and, and then we haven't planted those varieties, we have highly preferred uh, varieties in the ground at that point, uh, we can, we can uh, resort to cultural management strategies. Uh, firstly, you can try to find those um, egg masses that are uh, laid um, on the undersides of the leaves and try to squash them. Uh, you can also look for nymphs and adults and try to squash them as well. Just beware they do release a pretty noxious odor uh, as you're trying to uh, handle them and crush them. Uh, if that's not sufficient enough, um, we can also do some other tricks. We can plant, um, or we can place two by fours in the uh, vine row in between our, our squash beds. Um, and the squash bugs have a habit of, of trying to reside underneath the boards and, and other structures. So in the early morning we can go out and we can flip those boards over and we can direct our management strategy, our treatment, right um, where those those bugs are congregating, uh, whether it be insecticide or crushing um, and those sorts of things. And then there are chemical control options. So recent studies have shown that um, there are certain insecticides that work best for different life stages of squash bug. Now there are five nymphal stages of the squash bugs before they uh, molt into the adult stage. What works best against the nymphs, and that's typically the stage we're going to try to control because they are most susceptible to insecticides, uh, those studies have shown that uh, products that contain spinosad, the active ingredient spinosad in them, uh, will work best against those nymphal stages, both, both young and older nymphs. Uh, once they get to the adult stage, we have to resort to uh, some other chemicals. Uh, typically, we're looking at um, active ingredients that um, include pyrethrins as well as um, cypermethrins, so some of the pyrethroid-based insecticides. So as with many garden insects, vigilance is key. We need to continuously monitor uh, at least a couple times a week, uh, closely looking at our plants for the development of the pest in those plants. Uh, with squash bug management, it's very important to try to eliminate that first uh, uh, overwintering adult population as it comes into the crop and, and, and eliminate those adults as well as any eggs that have been deposited from that first generation. Uh, because as, that, uh, as we con uh, control that first generation, we're going to see um, long-term benefits over the course of the season with reduced pest pressure from squash bugs. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.